These are new stats, actually, that were debuted last week at uh, WordCamp San Francisco. So WordCamp, camp, WordPress since 2.3. Let's see if this works. Oh, yeah. That's kind of neat. Yay. I should get one of these. <laughs> I'm going to stand back in it. Uh, and WordPress now has an update feature, much like uh, Mozilla Firefox. So we have your WordPress pings the central, central server and says, is there a new version available? Or are the new versions of plugins available? Everything like that. So now we have, for the first time ever, actually okay stats about how many people are using WordPress.org, which we never had before. So this is actually the number that we found. Um, this was actually the number we found last week. This is the new number. <laughs> a full 200,000. So it's just since last Saturday when I gave the state of the word, it's gone up 200,000 WordPress.org blogs. Which I don't even know that ha how that happened because we didn't have 200,000 downloads. <laughs> so it's just, I don't know if this is people installing from the hosting panel or people who downloaded it once and installed it, you know, 100,000 times. <laughs> I'm actually a little bit confused. Um, so that puts us at a grand total of 6.7 million WordPress blogs in the world. So that's the .org numbers right here. I'm like Vanna White. There's the .com numbers here. And so I did a little complex math and added it up. Another interesting thing is around plugins. We found that the average WordPress blog has 4.96 plugins active and about uh, nine plugins installed. So I don't know what the .96 is, but maybe it's a short plugin. <laughs> We also had the word count earlier. Uh, who was it that said there were a number of words generated? So this is the number of words in one month on WordPress.com, 1.4 billion. Which I tried to do the math on how much money that was based on the math from earlier. So this brings up an interesting question. How do you make money? <laughs> in theory, there's all this value being created on the platform, right? There's just a raw amount of content being generated. There's folks selling things around it. There's uh, probably about, you did the math at one point, there's like two dozen startups with a combined total of over 200 million in funding that are basically built on WordPress. Um, and this is kind of interesting. So where do you go with all that? This is my personal opinion, that selling software is completely dead. Um, it is a dead model, it's dying, it's, or what did uh, Frank Zappa say about jazz? It's not dead, it just smells funny. <laughs> software it smells funny and is dead. So these are four companies, four largest internet companies in the world. Combined market cap of hundreds of billions of dollars. Which one sells software? Yeah, that's an easy question. <laughs> so, and, you know, which one is getting out of selling software? Microsoft. They're moving to things as web servers. They're moving to, you know, Office Live. And, you know, they're, it's clear that the existing ways, their cash cows, their sacred cows, where they made a ton of money before, are not going to make money for them in the future. So it's not dead. They're obviously making countless billions of dollars. <laughs> They've got like 90 billion in the bank or something. But it is dying. And you know, if Microsoft, who has been the most successful at this to date, sees the writing on the wall, all of us should too. This is my favorite quote in the world. If I was able to go online, I could have found out who said it. I think it was Bruce Sterling or something like this. But the best way to predict the future is to invent it. Um, so I think that very much. We have to be the change that we want to see in the world. So all of us need to, if I think that software is dead or dying, we have to sort of embody the model of where that's going. Traditional models, um, how basically businesses have worked over the past several thousand years have been based entirely on scarcity, right? So I have something and there's a limited quantity of it and that's what determines the price. You have the supply curve, the demand curve, you have you know, the super fancy purse that costs $5,000, and so it has a perceived scarcity in value. You have super commodity things. You have market things that were, uh, for example, individually created or very expensive, like electricity, that later moved to be a, a complete commodity to the point where, you know, it doesn't matter which plug in this room I plug into, although I did need an adapter, you know, just get juice, right? That's no longer true. Um, now with computers, with information, with the internet, you have to embrace the economics of abundance. So the real value is now created um, when things, there's an incremental value for every single copy. And it gains value. This is often known as a network effect or Metcalfe's law. You know, one fax machine is worthless, two are okay, but when there's a bajillion fax machines in the world, the value of each of them is, is increased. And this is 
compounded on the internet. I mean, who would want to join a social network with just like me? I don't know. No. <laughs> Uh, but a social network like Facebook, where every single one of your friends are on it, and every time you go to a party, they're bugging you about it, and they're posting the pictures to it, and everything like that. There's lots of incremental value being created. I'm just going to put this up like 20 times, <laughs> sort of drive in. 